just want to know who you slamming the bottle down at. Like, and we ain't known each other that long. From I saw this, I knew it was a rap between Jackie and Marshall. I knew it. Because ain't no way. That's how we starting off this relationship. Hey everyone, just be here, and I want to react to just the whole Jackie and Marshall situation that we've seen on Love is Blind so far. So I'm only covering a little bit up until, uh, I think, up until episode 11. And it's just really go what's going on with them and breaking down the situation because a lot of people seem to have a lot of thoughts on it because some things are so obvious, right? But some things to him apparently are not. So let's let's go into it and let's digest and break down what's really going on here. Well, today was a good day. Today was a good day. Being back in the house after experiencing the city with my baby, I'm in my emotions. I'm thinking about home, I'm thinking about my people, I'm thinking about work. You're in this beautiful country. It's supposed to be on this all expenses paid vacation at this, you know, luxury resort. And you're supposed to be here with the love of your life who you met and you're supposed to have this great connection with, but your mind can't help but drift away to your family and what else you got going on outside of there. Why, why aren't you present in the moment is the question people had. You should be present in the moment with Marshall right now, Jackie. So it was this moment right here really defined what happened for the rest of their relationship that we saw play out on screen. For me, at least, I, I could see it kind of taking uh, a, a, a turn, a big turn. A real commitment to me is loving my family, even though my family ain't perfect. And I'm scared that I'll lose him, then I'll push him away. That's what it really was about. This is, so them breaking up is what this was really about. Ah. Uh, I wanted to get into this as fast as possible. She starts out talking about her family, but really and truly, you know that based on what you're seeing, that he's presenting himself to you so far, it's it's triggering some feelings within you that show you that maybe I'm not ready for this. Maybe this is too much of a mature relationship for me. Maybe I'm not in the position that I need to be in as yet to be able to properly receive this love. You feel me? Some water. Okay, stay. So here you got this guy who you've only known or you've only seen him in person for a few days so far on this vacation, and he's already taking such great care of you. And he's going, I'd say going above and beyond, but I mean it's just you're just you're just caring for her, right? And making sure that you're good. Hey, what's going on? You want to talk? Make sure you, you you're taking the you know whatever pills you need to calm down. I'm gonna get you some water. You know, I'm concerned about you. I'm expressing that. And I think what happens is that you can have feelings within yourself that are unresolved regarding your brokenness that somebody who can come along and be a little bit more healed in their journey will now evoke a certain emotion out of you that really holds up a mirror to your face and shows you that, wow, uh, I'm really not where I need to be right now. Yeah, I think it. <laughs> So I, I, I didn't understand why she started crying. I'm just like, when I saw that, I was like, what is going on? Like, but this was the moment I was like, she ain't ready, bro. And I know they weren't going to work out because this entire scene made no sense. Everyone was like, oh, she's just concerned about her family. I'm just like, but she, she still came on the show. She still signed up for the show. And when she got casted, she still went on it knowing what, the end result was going to be. Now, I, I know some people are saying that Jackie had some situations going on where she's caring for, I think, a sick relative and so forth. And, you know, obviously that is weighty within itself. What I'm talking about here is if you know the position that you're in and how much responsibility is being put on you by your family and you're not in a position to go ahead and focus on a relationship, let alone a marriage, why sign up for the show? And then when you find the guy and you're one of the few people that actually make it through, you know, you're now bringing this weight, this weight is coming on you. But I'm telling you, the family situation isn't the actual issue, right? 
That's not the issue. Come here. It's okay. When I saw this breakdown, I knew it was a wrap for them, man. It was something that was, it was screaming broken to me, bro. Like, because it was so left field. It didn't add up with anything else we'd seen about their relationships, like, for the season so far. And I feel sorry for this brother, man. I feel sorry for him. I'm just tired, that's all. <laughs> What is going on, man? I know what? What do you know? You, you don't know anything. I get it. Stuck back home, I'm creeping too, present. I get it. I feel like that sometimes. Did you have a good day? I had a great day. Good. One of those days where it's like... Nice. It was just nice. Am I gonna afraid? I wanna know who you'd slam that bottle down at. You see, he, <laughs> Marshall was like... What, what to do with that? I don't know what to do with that. It was almost like she was having an attitude with him in this moment. Like, what's up with that? I feel sorry for this brother. It's, it's, it's a lot, but I'm excited still. Just ready ready to take the world on. Well, what's the first thing that you want to do now that we're back? <laughs> That's the most exciting part, just waking up to her every day and being able to cook breakfast and like send her off to work and, and get started with my day and, and wait till she gets home. Yeah, this brother, he, he was so committed to the process and he, he was really committed to, to being with Jackie and, and just doing all the stuff that he needed to do. Like You can see he was willing to go above and beyond and be who she needed him to be uh, you know, for their relationship and for their inevitable marriage. And to see how it all turns out, it, it was in such bad taste. So I'm just breaking down the dynamic and how we get there, and I want to explain what's really going on beneath the surface. I would hope so. Okay. I think so. And my dad's really cool. Like, my dad's not. My dad's be like, oh, okay, nice. And then my mom is more like, like me, but like. Oh, so it'll be fine. I get along. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? My dad's really nice, but my mom's more like me. What does that mean? Are you saying she's the opposite of nice? Are you saying you're the opposite of nice? We're great. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, this brother, you, you can see he was just like, all right, okay, yeah, my, my, my folks, yeah, they, they, you know, they're cool uh, with, with, with everything. And, she, you know, she's like, her family's kind of on the fence and, you know, she wants to deal with that later. She doesn't want to process that emotionally right now. She wants to put up, put it off. So, but I, well, you got to watch people's faces though, right? You got to watch their micro emotions and, 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 and some of their, you know, other tells. With him, you can see he processes a lot of information and he doesn't try to verbally express it too loud, but he, he does it a lot up here and he contains it so he can have a, a well presented composure but it ends up kind of falling flat on his face sometimes with him. I hope he got nothing on you. Nothing. Okay. I tried to tell you, girl. This brother was making IHOP buttermilk pancakes from scratch for her, making sure she's good, you know, before she goes about her day and he starts work and he's pouring into her, you know, giving her love and affection and that time because he's just so happy to know her and, and, and be with her. But it's like, you know, I would always see with Jackie, it's like this kind of emotionally distant demeanor. I, I wondered what was really going on there. And now we understand why. So all of these things were just clues to what was beneath the surface. I would have never thought to even be waking up with a fiance, let alone a fiance who is going to cook me food. I'm not used to this. I've never experienced love, period. And that, that is what made me know for sure they weren't going to work out. You should be coming into this process, going, having gone through your therapy, having gone through your healing journey, or well, well on your way further down on that healing journey. To say not, listen, I haven't ever experienced this before. I've never been loved before. 
that is not a, I'm not saying that's your fault, but that's something that you need to look within. Why am I looking for love somewhere else where I haven't found it within myself yet? Why am I looking for somebody else to fill a void that I haven't yet been able to create a self-love for? Is what I'm hearing. And I'm telling you, when she said that I've not been loved like this, I've never experienced love, that was a red flag. Because the first love you should be able to be experiencing is self-love. You know, and if you're talking now, let's say she was talking about from somebody else, right? If she was talking about that from somebody else, okay, cool. But that within itself is something whereas people I you ask the question, why hasn't she experienced love? Why is it that you're so far along in your journey, but you've not experienced love? Any kind of love? Not talking about family and whatnot, but at all? Relationally? Romantically? That's a big red flag, bro. So, you know, play and I just sat down. And that was so special to me because I'm like, this is so nice. Like, I've never been treated like this before. You've never been treated to a meal before, sis? A man's never treated you to uh, cook you a meal? And, and cater to you in, in a nice fashion before. Now, I'm not saying, you know, that's something that's going to be, you know, a bigger discussion, but it definitely plays into the dynamic of where she was at mentally and emotionally. And I think Marshall, you can see, bro, like he knows that, bro, this is a tough nut to crack. And I'm going to have to put in work. But you can see he was, this brother was committed to it, man. He's like, look, that's going to be black love. And I was rooting for the, for the, for these guys. Because I'm like looking at Brett and Tiffany. I'm like, look, that that's in the, we can see that's in the bag, right? Let's get, in the, let's get some more black love, right? Two for two this season. Let's go. So, you know, but, but look, this, this particular scene defines the second part of why I knew they weren't going to work out because she never experienced true love and affection before in a romantic sense. I walked in, saw you. I should have told you how I felt. Yeah. I haven't talked to Josh since Chelsea's party. That was the first time seeing him physically and I was immediately attracted to Josh. Seeing you, first I didn't even... She was attracted to what she'd always been attracted to. So the whole concept of the show is that, is love blind? That's really the question. Is love blind? So the fact that you, Marshall's doing all the things that you said that you want, right? Or no, that you said that you need, but Josh is the guy that you want just based off of pure physical attraction. And also Josh is probably someone that doesn't challenge you to go deeper within yourself. The problem that Jackie had with Marshall was that Marshall was presenting in such a way where he's like, ah, oh, she was like, um, yeah, you know, he's he's communicating, he's sensitive, he's he's kind, he's loving, he's affectionate, you know, he, he's he's listening to me, uh, he caters to me, serves me, you know, he does all these great things that we say that we want, but I really truly deep down have some brokenness within me that I haven't worked through. I got some healing within me that I haven't done. And so instead of now trying to make it uh, a priority to go through that healing journey, I'm going to now resort back to my old habits and date guys who I'm just attracted to on the outside. But deep down, they probably can never be who I need them to be. But because I haven't gotten to a level where I can really receive the love that I need, I'm going to go back to the love that's just good enough. And that's what Josh was. You. I heard your voice. <laughs> and your voice is so distinctive. Like, I got so used to it that I instantly knew it was you. Because I went back to the pause. And, like, all the hairs on my body, like, stood up. Like, my nipple got hard. And I was like, oh, that's Josh. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Listen. She's talking about <laughs> the nipple got hard. And, you know, so it's all about this physical attraction that she had to him. And, and reflecting on the conversation she had, she had with him in the pods about how something he said turned her on physically. But the whole goal of this was for them to be able to make sure that they're making a connection that's more than just physical. And so it, it was just in bad taste to see this play out like this. She hadn't even broken up with the guys yet. She hadn't even broken up with Marshall. But yet she's on a date with Josh while Josh is, is out with the boys thinking that, yes, yeah, she's out there, you know, 
uh, getting fitted for a wedding dress, and Brett has to come up and say, hey, bro, uh, let me pull you aside for a second. Yeah, yeah, your girl didn't show up. So why don't you know that she didn't show up? You know how embarrassing that is? I feel sorry for that brother, man. Got him out here looking like a fool. Marshall is too sensitive for me, basically. Marshall too sensitive for her. That was the first time I ever had somebody like love me and like sh show me and really like translate that to me. I never had that before. I wanted to keep that. And when I had told him to, you know, be a more aggressive and boss up, he left for like three days. He was completely he did the like, opposite. He did like he like just got up and left. And I was like, I I stayed, and then you leave. You should. That's such a surface level response. You know when someone's trying to now make it seem as if what the other person did was so wrong or so bad, but the story just isn't adding up. She's like, oh, well, I, I wanted this, but then he, he reacted this way, and then because of that, I didn't like that, and so that's why it's not really connecting for me. And it's just like, we've seen the show. Now, Josh doesn't know the true dynamic that's going on, but, I mean, we, the viewers, know that's not true. This isn't the, this isn't the reason that it's going on. It's because you're not in a position where you're ready to receive the love that the black man's given to you. But you don't, you don't want to admit that. That was grimy, bro. You kissing this brother and you ain't even let your fiance know it's done. Hello. Hello. How are you? <sighs> Not good. I need answers. Why did you accept my proposal? In the pods, I, what I felt for you was real. That was so real to me. It's just the outside world got to us. And- Got to us or got to you? That's the question. Is it, it didn't get to us, it got to you. And you're saying that the outside world, but really it's the inside her that's not fully healed. It has nothing to do with you guys ever see the, this picture of how an iceberg typically looks, right? You have the floating ice in the water. On top of it, you have a smaller piece, but beneath the surface, there's like this bigger chunk of ice, right? Floating beneath there. That's way bigger than what's on the tip. And what you see her trying to express here is her presenting dynamic, but the latent dynamic, which is the iceberg beneath the water, is not at all what she's saying. It's that, bro, uh, I'm not healed. And you are literally checking off the boxes of what it is that I need in a partner, but I don't wanna admit that I'm not there. So what she does in this conversation is she tries to gaslight Marshall into having a negative emotional reaction so she can now justify her decision. But you will see that basically he doesn't fall for it. He sits back, he processes it, and he's like, hmm. I'm emotionally drained. I tried as much as I can to answer your question, but I wasn't sufficing. And I think my fed up moment was coming back home after Chelsea's party, you still was pressing on me. And I'm like, bro, like, I'm just trying to go to bed. I yeah, and you see, she's kind of pulling stuff out of thin air now. It's like these random moments that don't really hold much water. They don't carry a lot of weight into the entire, you know, issue that he knows what the issue is, right? Well, at least in part. Up until this moment, he didn't know what happened with Josh. But he knows there's some deeper emotional stuff going on within her that she isn't expressing beyond the family stuff. But now she's trying to say, oh, it's because you want to talk about it after the party, that I had an issue with that. And it's like, I'm gonna pull stuff out just to make it seem like it's your fault. I gotta go to work tomorrow. I get that you need your feelings validated. I get that. But when I say, look, I'm just trying to go to bed. We can talk about this tomorrow. There's, we can talk about that tomorrow. I can't give you what you want. When you hear a woman say that to you as a man, believe that. I have never asked anything of you, never. You need a lot of security. I have done nothing but right by you. And for you- Look, look at her demeanor for a second. I'm gonna say things that I know or I hope is gonna piss this brother off. 
So he can now have a negative emotional reaction. And so I can now look like I'm the victim. To sit here and say that I require a lot, I'm emotional, yes. Have I encouraged conversation? Yeah. Have I let things go to the wayside and, and blow in the wind, blow over, because you didn't want to talk about them? Yes. Yes. Everything has always been on your terms. Everything. I liked you. I'm like, look, just give me something. Give me that feeling that everyone says you know when you know. And I didn't have that feeling, and I tried every time to have that feeling. Is she, not, is she not even saying she loves him anymore? Like, I like I like you? Like... So, I can't love you because I'm attracted to Josh. I just saw Josh. And there is some chemistry. The frequency at which she is dropping these bombs right now is meant to provoke him and get a reaction out of him. She's being honest, she's saying what's happening, but she really, the deeper issue here is that she really, really doesn't wanna take full responsibility for the breakdown of their relationship. So she's seeding in information, not to necessarily be dishonest, but she's doing it at rapid pace right now and with such little care and with such little sensitivity, simply to get a reaction out of him. So what was the talk about? It was him basically confessing his feelings. What are you saying to me right now? This brother is pissed when he heard that. See, it's one thing for you to say, like, look, there's no connection. You know, I got other things going on that he already knew. But now when you, as a man, when you now start to say there's another man that you just saw, that you're attracted to and that you want to be with him, you know that's going to set me off. You know that. I don't want to be with you anymore, and... You want to be with Josh? I will find that out. <laughs> Even though they just agreed to start a relationship in the previous clip. And now she's saying, I'm going to find that out. <laughs> okay, Jack. That is very hurtful. I'm just telling you, Marshall, that I just can't be with you. I can't. I would like the ring back because I don't think that you deserve it. Yeah, so how she responds to this was was not the best. Regarding the, the ring thing, that was not the best response to that. Like, isn't the ring something that Netflix even pays for? That's what I don't even <laughs> Netflix pays for the ring. The guys pick him out, I think, but, but Netflix pays for the ring. So the fact that she now wants to keep the ring, it was not a good look. It was not a good look. Because you should never have accepted my proposal? Well, I'm going to keep the ring because I accepted it because I wanted to marry you. Everything I told you in that pod was real. And you know what? I, I don't even care. You can, you can keep the ring. Every time you look at that thing, whatever you do. Look at her, she's like, damn. Ah, I thought we could be able to fight over the ring. Uh, he let that go too. Is there anything that can stick with this brother? I need him to flare up. <laughs> Do with it. I want you to be reminded that you passed up on something great. Okay. Great. Well, take it easy and I'll see you around. Take it easy and I'll see you around. That's it. So... It it was really hard to watch this because, like I said, Tiffany and Brett, you know, we're talking about black love and we're seeing that story develop. Like, this is the most, I think, invested that a lot of the Love is Blind, you know, fans have been since season one. Now, you know, we see something the black community can cling to in Tiffany and Brett. And we were hoping to get, like I said, two for two with Jackie and Marshall. But from I saw... You know, the whole breakdown at the resort. I said, yeah, there's some stuff going on beneath the surface, bro. She ain't ready, bro. She ain't ready. And it's crazy because he's literally, from watching this entire season, not saying he's a perfect individual by any stretch of the imagination, but what I'm saying is that there's something that, as a man, that this woman said that she needed in a partner. And there are some things that she heard through conversations in the pods that made her choose him 
and made him choose her. And now when we finally get there, it's not even about physical attraction for her. It's about inner healing that needs to happen, but the brokenness that's there and him being more far along in his maturity and her probably not is causing her to have a negative reaction within herself and not show up. And she won't admit that. She'll use all these other excuses, but she won't admit what's really going on. And as I say, I'm just not there, Marshall. I'm not there. But that's crazy, man. And this brother took some hits. He took some hits in this show emotionally, but he kept his composure and he more likely is going to process it off camera as you should because we don't need another image of a black man raging out at a black woman. We don't need that. What we need to see is examples of people like Marshall saying, all right, cool, gotcha, all right, that hurt, but you know what? I'm going to live. I'll move on. Thank you for your time. Have a good day. We need to see that as much as this was in bad taste to see. Like, what was that look about? Come on, nigga. Like, <laughs> I swear, there was this something going on so deep within her, and I hope that she gets the healing and, and goes to therapy and does the inner work that she needs to do. Like, did, like look at that look. Um, maybe, maybe not. No, you won't. Okay. <laughs> That's so nasty. That was a really nasty look. <sighs> and so unnecessary. Jackie, the woman that presented herself to me in the pods, that's the Jackie that I love. This Jackie, the deflecting, the gaslighting, the deceitful Jackie. He calls it out. The deflecting, the gaslighting, the deceitful. This ain't the same woman. I don't know who that is. And apparently that's the real Jackie. I wish her nothing but the best. If that's with Josh, do your thing. Good luck. Sorry that I can't be with him. I, I, I'm not even sorry. I was about to say that. I was like, you're not even sorry. You're not. <laughs> you're not sorry. Like, you, you don't have to say that anymore. I'm not, I'm not even sorry that I can't be with Marshall. I can't. Because you don't care. I can't walk down the aisle with this man. I don't even know if I'm going to be with Josh. I don't. I don't know if I'm gonna be with anybody. Damn, I'm crazy. Listen. Listen. That right there is insane. So I don't know. I don't wanna be with him. I don't wanna be with Josh. Even though I just committed to Josh and kissed Josh before I even broke things off with Marshall. Heck, I might be crazy. And this is, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to bash her by any stretch of the imagination. I'm simply breaking down what she has presented for the world to see. And if we look at these kinds of dynamics between individuals, and if we take a, a mirror and look at ourselves, we can say that, look, I ain't there. You know, uh, Marshall, you know, he came in and even he even admitted I listen, I, I came into this process wanting to get married, you know, and, and she was asking for this, 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 and this. And I presented that she chose me, I chose her. But yet at the end of the day, it's like you know that you weren't healed. You knew that, man, this guy's showing up in such a way that it's gonna reveal my brokenness. And it is revealing my brokenness. And it is revealing my trauma. And it is revealing my triggers. And instead of me admitting I'm not ready, I'm a gaslight, I'm a cheat, I'm a be deceitful, and it just made it look so bad, and it hurt the brother, man. <sighs> so the fact that she's gonna say, I don't know what I'm gonna do, I'm, 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 I'm crazy. I'm like, no, man, no, sis, don't, that's not flattering. Don't say that, sis. I, I want so much more for my people, man, you know? I want so much more for my for my black people. When we come on screen and we're talking about black love and we're talking about what a man needs to do and what a woman needs to do and where they both need to be on their journeys when they finally come to each other, it's like you can clearly see in this dynamic one person was there and the other person wasn't. 
And it's sad to see it play out like this because all it did was not show him in a negative light. It showed her in a negative light. And it just kind of revealed her to the world that, you know, the, the, the inner trauma that's there, but it also revealed her not wanting to own up and take accountability for that. And that's what make it so bad. I need to probably do some self work. Yes, you do. And I'm glad that you can now at least admit that here. You should have admitted that to the brother in advance or even while you guys were together. But yes, you do. You, you do need to do some self. We all need to do some self work before we engage in relationships. And shout out to the brother. Shout out to Marshall for not fumbling under the pressure of just responding in, in emotion and, and, and hurt right to her and reacting and lashing out and furthering that stereotype of the angry black man. Like, shout out to the brother, man. Like, hats off to him. I'm glad he kept his composure and, you know, he kept his cool in the face of all that pain. You can see that brother was in pain, right? Man to man, you can see when, that, when a bro another brother is in pain. You know. As a man and as a black man, you know when your other brother's in pain. Shout out to him for, for keeping it and holding it together. So, you know, that's that's my breakdown of my whole thoughts in the Jackie and Marshall situation from Love is Blind. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff, and let me know your thoughts if you guys have any. Till next time, peace.